All right, so welcome everybody, welcome all those developers, and welcome to this new live class, 126. Uh, as I have just said, we are going to be reviewing a little bit today uh, some new features introduced with this Rush to Galactic uh, release. We are going to be uh, checking some of them, doing some demos and tests. So yeah, let's go for it. So I'm going to quickly change to my computer screen. And as always, we are going to be working on the on the construct platform. We are going back to our live classes. So last week we had the Rush to Week, uh, Rush to Learning Week. At, uh, I don't know if you attended, but uh, today we are we are going back to our regular live classes. So um, as always, you are going to have to come here to the live classes panel. So if you are uh, seeing this, you are already here. Then um, remember that you can fine tune the volume here in case you want to increase it, decrease it, etc. And as always, in order to get the project for today, the project that we are going to be using today, you need you have to click on this button fork and open the class project. So I'm going to do this right now, and this is basically going to copy the project to your account, and it's going to also automatically open it in this case. So as you can see, it's getting opened automatically. Uh, it might take uh, a few uh, moments to load the environment. So in case it takes a little bit long, uh, just be patient there. And um, yeah, so I'm waiting here to for my environment to load so that I can also Okay. So I'm not I'm not seeing here the chat and I should see the chat here. So give me one second to see if I can fix this quickly because uh, of course I want to I want to see your your I want to see your comments and everything. So let me give me just one second. Because I think I, I might know what it's going on here. Let me see. All right, let me let me refresh uh, here, and also you should refresh. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, great, great. Okay, yeah, it was what I was thinking. So, um, so yeah, uh, the ones that have already opened the project, just uh, refresh the environment, and then you are going to now start seeing here the live streaming as uh, it should be. All right. So also, I'm going to open this so that I can uh, see the chat. Let me open this. Okay, now I have the chat here. Let me write something. I can see the comment from uh, 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 Ricardo also. Hello, Ricardo. Okay, so uh, can you guys confirm that you can see the streaming, the chat? You can write something here in the chat. so that I know that you guys are here.
Okay, well, maybe, maybe. Okay, so remember, I'm going to say one more time. Remember, in case that you are not seeing the live streaming panel here, as I have right here in the right side of the environment, in case you are not seeing this, just refresh the project, all right? Refresh it, and then you are going to be able to see the live streaming panel here with the current video live and also the chat here, all right? So that you can interact with me in case you have any doubts, whatever, you can write it here and I'm going to, to be able to see it, all right? Okay, so I'm going to keep moving in any case so that I don't get stuck here. So at any point, if you need to ask anything, you can write it here in the chat and I'm going to, to read it, all right? So yeah, let's go for it. Then uh, as I was saying, today's live class number 126, we are going to be doing a, an overview of the new release of ROS2, which is Galactic Geo Chelone. Okay, so we are going to see some of the new features that have been introduced with this new uh, release. And we are going to be uh, doing some tests about these different uh, features uh, in order to, to see a practical case, all right? So uh, as for, the, for, for this course, of course, since we are going to be working with ROS2, uh, we have a couple of uh, related courses in our academy, which are the ROS2 Basics in 5 days Python, and ROS2 Basics in 5 days C++, all right? I have already left here the links in case that you want to have a look at it. And uh, where basically you are going to be uh, able to learn all the most basic concepts uh, related to ROS2, which are basically uh, topics, services, uh, actions, also the Bewin tools, also some more uh, complex uh, Topics like no composition, you are going to be covering uh, them here. So yeah, have a look in case you are uh, interested in learning and in start learning ROS2 or in becoming a ROS2 developer. Have a look at uh, these uh, courses where you are go going to be able to to get all the basic knowledge required for for being a ROS2 developer. All right. Today we are going to to we are not going to be covering much uh, theoretical aspects about ROS2 but we are going to be doing some uh, more uh, kind of isolated demonstrations of uh, specific features, all right, that have been introduced in this uh, new ROS2 Galactic release, all right? So we are not going to focus that much in, 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 in theoretical concepts, all right? Of course, we are going to explain uh, everything so that it is clear. I'm going to explain everything so that it is clear, every uh, different step and every every uh, new feature, I'm going to explain it as well. All right, so before starting also, I want to, to, to remember you about the ROS Developers Day, okay? So in our main page, you are going to see this uh, button here, which is going to take you to the ROS Developers Day page, all right? And uh, this is a conference that is going to happen on June the 19th, all right? I'm going to, to actually, I'm going to... I'm going to, to send here in the chat the link to the main page so that you can have a look at it. Let me write it down here in the chat a couple of times. So here uh, you're going to be able to see the, you're going to be able to register, of course. As well, you can see a recap from last year's conference uh, to see more or less how it's going to be. But basically it's going to be, um, it's going to, to be with our style. Okay, the construct style. W what is this style? Well, this style is uh, basically what we do or, to, or what we intend to do in uh, our live classes, for instance. So it's going to be a conference uh, based on practice, all right? The procedure is going to be very similar to these live classes. So we are going to share for each uh, uh, speech, for each speaker, um, we are going to share with all the attendants our projects, with all the instructions, and uh, these instructions are going to contain practice, all right? So you are not going to be just uh, listening to a video, or listening to what the speaker is saying, or, or watching to some slides. No, you are going to be listening and, and seeing what the speaker is explaining, of course, but at the same time, you are going to be practicing everything with a, a project, like the one we have right here, all right? 
So have a look and uh, register. Uh, this week uh, is the last week with a regular uh, registration, a standard registration. So, so yeah, don't lose any more time. All right, here you are going to be able also in this page to, if you scroll down, you are going to see all the different uh, speakers and uh, you are going to see also the agenda, which time is going to be each uh, speech and what they are going to be about. Okay, to see the different topics that we are going to be covering and, and, and have a look uh, in case that you, you are interested in them. All right. So, yeah, I have left there in the chat the, the, the link. So, yeah, you can have a look. Then uh, let's go for it. So, first of all, we are going to, to, to execute a couple of commands in order to properly set up the environment. Okay. Since we are going to be testing the ROS2 Galactic uh, features, of course, we have to work with a ROS2 Galactic environment, which is the case. If you click here, you, you are going to see that currently this environment is using a ROS2 Galactic distribution. Okay, So this is a new environment that we have created uh, very recently, a few days ago. So it's still uh, a bit experimental, let's say. All right, it's not the final, final environment. Then uh, in order to make sure that all the commands that we are going to be using and everything works properly, we are going to need to execute a couple of commands. So uh, let me execute them very quickly and uh, explain what why we are doing this. So in order to do so, we are going to open a new web shell. Remember, as always, the web shell icon is uh, here, the first one in the bottom left corner. If you click here, this is going to open a new uh, web shell. And then uh, in this web shell, which is uh, a regular Linux shell, we are going to, first of all, execute this command. Okay? Why this command? Because if we do, if we have a look with ls minus la, we're going to see that this ROS folder, which is uh, basic for uh, working with ROS, it actually contains a broken link, okay? Then um, what we are going to do is to basically remove this so that we get rid of this broken link. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, rm.ros, okay? So now, as you can see, this broken link with uh, the .ros folder is gone, okay? So we have just uh, removed it. Then what we are going to do next is to create it again without any soft link or anything. We are going to directly create this folder by ourselves with this command, mkdir minus p ros, and we are going to create inside this uh, ros uh, folder, we are going to create another folder named lock. All right, so now we have created this uh, ros folder, which now it's, as you can see, it's not in red or anything. So. Uh, it's uh, everything is correct, all right? And in fact, if we get inside uh, this ROS folder, we are going to see the log folder, all right? So this is a, a step that we need to do at this point because this galactic distribution is, uh, it's not, let's say that it is in an experimental stage. Uh, it's not the final stage. So we need to do this at this point uh, in order to make sure that everything works as expected, but, uh, in any case, in the following days, uh, we are going to fix all these small issues so that the galactic distribution is 100% functional, all right? So yeah, very important, okay? Remember to run these two commands. First, you need to remove the hidden ROS folder, and then once it is removed, you need to create it again with the log folder inside, okay? If you don't do these steps, uh, you are going to get some errors in the next steps of the life class, okay? So make sure that you follow these steps and that you do them correctly, okay? All right, so let's go for it. Then, um, yeah, so uh, uh, the ROS2 Galactic GeoChelon uh, distribution that we are going to be overviewing today is the latest ROS2 release, okay? So uh, it, it is currently a supported distribution. The Galactic, uh, ROS2 Galactic, it is currently supported, but it is not an LTS. 
which means a long-term support distribution, okay? What does this mean? This means that it's not going to be supported forever, all right? So at some point, the support is going to end. The only distributions that uh, are going to have more support are the LTS distributions, the long-term support distributions, okay? In this case, Rose to Galactic is not, this is important to make it clear, is not a long-term support distribution, all right? Then, as I have just said, in this live class, we are going to, to overview basically some of the main changes and features introduced with this uh, new distribution. And I have left here the official documentation in case you want to have a look here. You can open it and you are going to see uh, all the complete data about this new uh, release, okay? All the new features, changes since the Foxy release, which was the last release, no issues about this, this distribution. Basically, you have uh, all the data here. A yeah, supported flat platform, for instance, which, uh, by the way, it's Ubuntu 20, Windows 10. Okay, so here you are going to, to see a complete, uh, all the complete data about this new release. Okay, here in the project, we are going to, to, to just cover some specific parts. Okay. Um, yeah, then here uh, I have added a, a list with the main, with the new features added in ROS to Galactic. We are not going to be checking all of them, uh, just some of them. But uh, actually, we're going to be testing some of them, half of them, more or less, I would say. But here you have a complete list of all of them, okay? Also in the official documentation, you are going to see a full list with all the new features, which is which are all of these ones, with uh, extended information about all of them, all right? Here I'm going to focus more on the practical part and I'm not going to go too uh, deep into these changes, all right? So, so yeah, let's go for it, let's just start. Any questions so far? Any doubt, any comment? before I start. As you can see today, we are not going to be working with uh, any simulation. So we are just going to, to be working with uh, shells and we are going to be launching nodes and everything here directly from the shell, but we are not going to get any simulation involved. Okay, no question so far, so let me uh, keep going. Then um, the first feature that we're going to check is the ability to specify per logger log levels, okay? So uh, what does this mean? This means that we can specify the log level of a specific node, all right? So we can test this with the bellow command, so let's do this right now. I'm going to copy directly the command here from the from the notebook and paste it to the shell. So let me do it. Oops, I have removed it. Okay, we can copy it directly from the notebook and paste it here, okay? So as you can see here, what we are doing is to run this talker node from the demo notes CPP package. So we are uh, running this talker node and we are passing a couple of uh, arguments. The first, the first one, the first log level that we can see here, log level warn, which means warning. Here, what we are doing is to set the general log level, all right? The general log level. Then again, here we are using again this log level argument. And in this case, in the second one, what we are doing is to set, let me make this bigger. What we are doing here is to set the log level of this specific talker node. Okay, so first we are setting the general log level to warning, but then we say, hey, but this specific node, this talker node, the one that I am running right now, I want it, I want to set its log level to devook. Yeah, makes sense. So for instance, if I run this right now, 
I'm going to be able to see the logs. Yeah, the book log level implies the info logs. For instance, what would happen if I now change the log level of the talker node to warning also, to warning or danger, in this case to warning. What is going to happen if I change this log level to warning? Well, let's see it. If I run again the node, what happens is that I am no longer able to see the logs because I have set this to warning. All right? So the info logs, which are the ones that are being printed in this talker node, I am not able to see them. In, all, in order to see them, I need to lower the log level to the debug level. All right? Okay, so this is a, an interesting uh, new feature which has been added with this uh, new ROS to Galactic. So the ability to specify per logger log levels. Okay, so the below command, as I have just explained, sets a global log level of warning, but sets the log, le the log level of the talker node messages to debug. Okay. All right. So let's uh, stay with uh, the logs, the logs uh, features. And the next one, another new feature that has been added with ROS to Galactic is the ability to configure the logging directory. Okay, so we can configure in which directory we want the logs to be uh, saved, let's say. All right, and this is done through this ROS log dir variable. Okay, there are other variables in Plaid also, like ROS home, but I'm going to, to, to use this method, which is using the ROS log dir. Okay, so we can use this environment variable, ROS log dir, in order to set, to specify here, which is the folder, the directory, where we want to save the uh, ROS related logs. All right. In this case, as you can see, I have set here uh, this folder, which is my logs, which it should be in this ROS to workspace SRC. Okay. However, however, spoiler, this folder doesn't exist. Okay. So we need to create it. If we come uh, here to the ROS to workspace SRC and I do an LS, I'm going to be a couple of uh, packages, demos and ROS testing, but I don't have, as I can see, I don't have inside here, this my logs folder, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is to create it. We need to create it. You can do it also from the code editor, okay? Remember that you can always open the code, the code editor from here, it's the second icon. And again, if from the code editor, we open the ROS to workspace and go to the SRC folder, we are not going to see the my logs folder, okay? So in any case, we need to create it. We can create it directly from here with new folder, or we can create it from the shell, okay? I'm going to do it uh, from here, mkd my logs. In any case, you need to name this new folder like this, my underscore logs, okay? Have the name here. You need to name it like this, my logs. So now, in the IDE, we are going to be able to see this folder, which at this point, of course, is empty. Okay, we have not yet generated any any logs. So at this point, it's going to be empty. All right. Then once we have this folder, the next step is to set the environment variable, ROS log dir. So we can do this with this command. Export ROS log dir and the path. Okay, in this case, it's the path to the mylogs folder. Home user, ROS to workspace, SRC, mylogs. So now I can confirm, for instance, with an echo command, I can confirm the value of this ROS log dir. And I can confirm that the value is correct, okay? So now that I have set this ROS log dir uh, variable to this specific folder, all the ROS logs that I generate are going to be saved into this folder, okay? So let's see 
Let's actually check if this really happens, if this works as expected. So what we are going to do is to run the following command in order to generate some uh, logs, some random logs, okay? So I'm going to copy this command uh, again. Well, oops, sorry. I'm going to copy this command from here and run it. Rush to run logging demo, logging demo main. So let me run this. And this is going to start, uh, as you can see, generating here some logs. Okay, so let me stop it right here. Okay, let me stop the program. Then this has, as you can see, this has printed uh, here into the web shell some logs. And now if uh, everything uh, works as expected, in the my logs folder, I should have some logs generated, right? So let me check it in this, in this case here from the IDE. And inside the my logs folder, we can see that some logs have been generated. So I can I can even open these files and it's a it's a txt file, it's a text file, regular text file. So I can open this file and I'm going to see indeed the same logs as you can see, the same logs that I was seeing on the shell. Okay, the same logs that I was printing here in the shell. I can see them now here in the uh, file, in the log file that has been generated in my specific path, all right? So we have just uh, tested that this works. And this is another uh, very interesting uh, new feature that has been added uh, with the Rush to Galactic release, okay? The logging directory configuration. So we can uh, easily configure the logging directory, okay? All right, so let's keep advancing in uh, through the features and doing some more tests. Okay, so another very interesting new feature is that we can ex externally configure the QoS, which is the quality of service at startup. So it is possible to configure the quality of service settings of a node at startup at startup time so when we are starting where we are when we are uh, launching a ROS2 node at the time of starting it we can uh, configure or modify set the quality of service of this node okay so let's have a look at how to do this Quality of service, by the way, it's, uh, it's a topic which is a bit more uh, advanced, but uh, I think it's, it, it could be interesting to, to try to explain it and cover it uh, a bit more uh, deep in, in one of the future life classes, all right? So um, in any case, it's not going to be in this one. So let's right now just copy this first command uh, here from the notebook and paste it to the shell and see what this does, okay? So here, what we are doing basically, as you can see, is just we are running a ROS node uh, with the regular ROS to run commands. ROS to run, quality of service demo CPP, this is the package, and QoS overrides talker, uh, this is the name of the node that we are going to be running, okay? Then, uh, once again, we are going to, to use uh, some ROS arguments. In this case, we are using the params file. Okay, so we are going to be loading a parameter file, a yum file. This yum file is in this path, which is specified here. Okay, it's inside the quality of service demo CPP package, share folder, quality of service demo CPP folder, etc. In fact, we can have a look at this yum file because we have it here. So we can open here, um, let me come here. We can open here the demos folder. And inside uh, this demos folder, we are going to find here this quality of service demo package, okay? So we can open it, we can go to uh, RCL CPP, params file, and example, um, example QoES overrides. Here we have it, okay? So this is basically the YAL file that we are loading, 
this example, QoS overrides.yam. Okay, as you can see here, what we are doing is that we are setting the QoS for this talker node, which is a, a, a publisher in this case, okay? Also the listener, and we are setting the rel reliability to reliable and the depth to nine, to nine okay? So basically here we are uh, setting, uh, we can change these values if you want in order to see how it uh, works. In this case, we are going to use these ones. And, uh, but basically these are the QoS settings that we are uh, changing here in this uh, YAML file their reliability and the depth, all right? So uh, what we are doing here is that we are loading, we are uh, launching, we are starting this QoS overwrites talker node, and we are going to overwrite for this node the QoS settings with the ones defined in this YAML file. Okay, so once I start this node, the, rel the rel reliability parameter is going to be reliable and the depth is going to be nine, okay? So let's run this command right now. There we go. And now we can get some information uh, of this uh, new topic generated, okay? so let we are going to have to open a new shell. You can click here on the add button in order to create a new shell. There we go. And then, very important, we are going to need to source opt ros galactic setup.bash and we are going to need to source ros to workspace install setup.bash. Okay? So now I can, for instance, get a list of all the topics that we have with ROS to topic list, and I'm going to see this QoS overrides chatter, which is the topic that I have just generated here with the node. Then I can get some information, some regular information with ROS to topic info about this uh, topic. Info, not Indo. There we go. And, uh, but in this case, I'm not getting information about the quality of service. So in order to get this extra information, to get data about the quality of service um, settings of this topic, I need to add, as you can see here, the verbose argument at the end, okay? So I need to add here at the end of this, of the ros to topic info command, the verbose argument. And this is going to provide me some extra data about this topic. Okay, for instance, the QoS profile, which as we can see, the reliability is set to reliable. Yeah, which is basically what I am setting here in this YAM file. All right. I'm not going to go, uh, as I have said, I'm not going to go uh, too deep into explaining about this QoS because there are uh, lots of things and uh, we don't have time in, in, in a live class, uh, in this live class at least, but um, I think it could be an interesting topic for future live classes to try to, to explain a little bit more and to go a little uh, bit deeper into, the, into this quality of uh, service settings, what implies uh, and etc. All right. So, um, great, perfect. So let's keep moving, let's keep moving. As you can see, we are seeing uh, uh, lots of different demos. So we are going to keep the rhythm. Then uh, another new feature introduced is a time panel for RVs2, okay? This is very easy to, to, to test. So basically what we need to do is to launch RVs. Well, first of all, let me stop this node, which we have here running. So basically here we need to do is to start rvs2 uh, with the rvs2 command. So let me run it here. And then uh, I'm going to uh, open, in this case, the graphical tools. Okay, this graphical tools is going to allow me to uh, see the rvs screen. So we can see here, okay? Then uh, in order to, to test this uh, time panel that has been introduced uh, with the ROS2 Galactic release, 
what I'm going to do, let me first of all maximize this. Uh, it's very easy. So all we need to do, well, actually we already have it here in this case, okay? So I already have it here. In any case, if you don't have it, all you have to do is to come here to panel, panels, add new panel, and then here you select the time panel, okay? And here you're going to see the uh, this new time panel, okay? Which we can see here the values, all right? Very easy, very easy to test. And here you are going to be able to see the the ROS time, ROS elapsed, wall time, and wall elapsed uh, times. All right, so let me stop this. Um, okay, let's keep advancing. Visualize serialized data. Okay, uh, this also... Um, this is also a quite advanced uh, feature, which uh, probably is not going to be used never by beginners. So in any case, I think it's interesting to, to show it because uh, probably if you become Rust2 developers, uh, at some point, uh, you are going to maybe need to use some of these things. And it's always I interesting to, to, to show them, to demonstrate them, and uh, to show you, all of you, that... Uh, this is possible, it's there, okay? So in this case, what we are going to do is that we are going to visualize the raw serialized data that the middleware, that the ROS middleware is sending, okay? In order to, to, to check this demonstration, to, to see basically what uh, is going to happen here and uh, to see how this raw serialized data looks like, we are going to first start publishing some, uh, and a string in this case, or regular data, okay? So I'm going to copy uh, this command again. I'm going to run it here in the shell. As you can see, uh, nothing special here. We are drawing a rust to topic pop. So we are going to start publishing into a topic named chatter. We are going to start publishing into this topic string messages with the uh, following data, the hello string, okay? So I can, uh, at this point, start publishing in loop. So now, for instance, if I do a ROS2 topic list here, I'm going to see this chatter topic, okay? I can also do a regular ROS2 topic echo of the chatter topic, and I'm going to see the messages that are being published into this topic, which are these hello strings, okay? Then, um, okay, so uh, like this, I am uh, seeing the, the regular data, the string, the contents of the string message, which in this case is uh, hello, okay? However, what we are going to be able to see here is not this, but the raw data, which is sent by the middleware, okay? So for this, we need to add this raw argument, okay? So let me add it here and execute again the command and voila. So, um, as you can see, nothing to do with the hello string, which is super easy to understand. Here we are seeing the raw serialized data sent from the middleware, okay? Again, this uh, middleware also is a, a it's a complex uh, topic. I have a data link below here. In any case, down I think somewhere here. Yeah, here in the in in, in a future step, which is this one, default rmw change to Eclipse Cyclone DDS. Here in this section, you are going to find a link here, which explains a little bit. Uh, about this ROS2 middleware interface, okay? So in case you want to get extended uh, data, you can have a look at this uh, article, which is super interesting and explains very clearly about this ROS2 middleware interface, okay? With some uh, graphs here that are going to help you understand, okay? 
But um, but yeah, basically it has to do with the protocols, etc. With the new protocols. In fact, we have also a we have also a live class where I talk about this. Let me have a look at this. But if I not if I don't remember wrong, I create so I created some weeks ago also a live class talking about this. Let me very quickly look for it. Dynamics. Yeah, here. Here you have this live class, Understanding DDS in ROS2, which also explains a little bit more about this ROS2 middleware config, uh, concept. Okay? So in case you want to, to go deeper into this also, if you are a more advanced developer and you are interested in knowing about this, um, you can have also a look into this live class and... and you're going to find all this uh, better explain it, okay? All right, so let me close this. And uh, yes, yeah, so as you can see, this has been introduced also in the ROS2 Galactic distribution. The possibility to visualize the raw serialized data, okay? Which, has, as you can see, looks uh, a lot different than this regular hello, okay? Then, um, yep, so let's keep going. Let me stop here the publisher. Okay. And load parameter files at runtime. Okay. Another very interesting new feature but that has been uh, added with Rust2 Galactic is that now it's possible to load parameter files at a runtime. Okay, so while the while the node is running, we can load a parameter file to this uh, node. Okay, so let's do this uh, very uh, simple demonstration to, to, to so that you can better understand and visualize what this means. So first of all, we are going to run this uh, command which is going to run this parameter blackboard uh, node. Okay, so let me run this node here. There we go. We are going to run this in a first shell, and then we are going to move to another shell to run the other commands. So uh, now we can interact with this node in different ways. First of all, what we are going to do here is that we are going to set and a specific parameter, okay? So let's run this first command, ros 2 param set. Let me run it here in this new shell. ros 2 param set, we are going to set for this node, the parameter blackboard, the node that we have started here. We are going to set this foo parameter. We are going to set it to the value bar, okay? So I can run this command. And now, as you can see, the parameter has been set successfully. And now, for instance, I can do a ROS2 param list. Sorry, ROS2 param list. And I'm going to see this parameter blackboard with the few foo parameter. Okay. I can also use here, here uh, I don't have it, but we can use the ROS2 param get in order to get the value of this foo parameter, okay? ROS2 param get foo. Uh, sorry, this is like this, if I know it wrong. Um, ROS2 param get, what was the command? Oh, yeah, ROS2 param get First, we have to specify the name of the node, which is this one, and then foo. See, so the value of this parameter, foo parameter is bar. Yeah, it's a value that we have set with this first command, okay? So another thing that we can do uh, is to dump the parameters of this node. So, let me copy again the command here from the notebook. And with the ROS2 param dump command, what we are going to do is to dump 
these parameters into a file. The parameters from this node into a file, okay? So let me do it, let me run the command. And I have now dumped, I have saved the parameters of, the, of this parameter blackboard node into a file named parameter blackboard.yam, which the file is, has been generated here. The same directory we have a, where I have executed the command, okay? I can also visualize it again here from the, from the IDE. Here I have it, parameter blackboard yalm, okay? So here I can see all the parameters from this uh, parameter blackboard node with the foo bar, with this foo parameter included, the one that I have said before, okay? So uh, let's do one more thing. I'm going to change the foo parameter to a different value. So at this point, as, as you can see, the foo parameter is set to bar, and now I'm going to set it to different, okay? So let me run this command in order to change the parameter. So now, for instance, if I run again the ros to param get command, I'm going to see that the foo parameter now is set to different instead of bar, okay? And what I'm going to do right now is to load back again this YAM file parameters, the parameters that I have here. In fact, we can even change it and put here, I'm going to put here something different. Um, FUBAR, I'm going to set it to, um, I don't know, baby Yoda. Okay, so I'm going to set it to Baby Yoda. And what I'm, going, what I'm going to do right now is to load this YAM file, the parameters defined in this YAM file into the node using this command, ros 2 param load, okay? So at this point, the parameter foo value is different. So after I load the YAM file parameters, I expect it to be Baby Yoda, right? So let me run then the ros to param load command, specifying of course the yam file I want I want to load. Okay, and this load of parameters has been done at runtime, as you can see. Yeah, so the 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 node is here running. So all of this is done in runtime. This load. So now if I Check again the few parameter value. I'm going to see that it's set to baby Yoda. All right. So there we go. Another uh, interesting uh, feature added in Rust to Galactic, which is that uh, the possibility to load parameter files at runtime. Okay. What else? Also, several Rust back to related features have been introduced uh, in Galactic. In this case, we are going to demonstrate only one, which is the possibility to uh, divide based on time back files, okay? So let me demonstrate this, which is going to be easier to understand once we do the demo. So let's just stop everything, all the notes. And again, we are going to start by running a very simple ros to topic pub command, which is going to start publishing the string hello into the chatter topic, okay? There we start the publisher node, here we have it. And now we are going to run this ros to back command in, a, in the second shell in this case. So let me come here and paste the command. And as you can see here, uh, the command says ros to back record chatter topic, so we are going to be recording uh, this topic, the chatter topic, where we are publishing the hello uh, string, we are going to be uh, recording the data published into this topic, into this chatter topic, and in this case I am using this argument max back duration. In this case here in the example is set to 100, but I'm going to set it to 10. This is uh, time in seconds, this 10, okay? And what does this mean? This means that I'm going to start recording all the data published into this topic, 
But I'm going to divide the back files in uh, different files of 10 seconds. So uh, basically, I'm going to start recording this topic for 10 seconds, and I'm going to save this into one file. Then I'm going to generate another file, and I'm going to record in this second file the next 10 seconds, and so on. Once the next 10 seconds finish, I'm going to uh, save that file, I'm going to generate that new file, and save the next 10 seconds into that new file. Okay, so basically, instead of having a super big back file where I record all the data published into this topic, basically, this allows me to divide all this data into different uh, back files depending on time. Okay, separate uh, I, I can divide all these files based on a time set. In this case, it's 10 seconds. So I'm going to divide the files. Uh, each 10 seconds, I'm going to be saving one file and generating a new one. All right? So this is something uh, very interesting that uh, let's demonstrate it right now by running this command. And this is going to uh, generate, as you're going to see uh, here, let me open a new shell, in fact. This is going to generate here a new folder, this one, rosback 2 with the time. And if we go inside this folder, we can see that new files are being generated. Zero, one, every 10 seconds, a new file is generated, as you can see. Now we have three. Now once 10, when 10 uh, other 10 seconds pass, the fourth file is generated and so on. We can also visualize, of course, these files here through the IDE. Hold these files every 10 seconds, are being generated. Yeah? Now, in 10 seconds, a new file is generated, as you can see. Okay? So, this is a very interesting feature also, in case that uh, you are used to work with uh, ROS2 bugs. This is something very interested, very interesting. Okay? So, let me stop all the notes again. Again, as I was saying, there are other uh, features uh, introduced related to, related with related with ROS2 bugs, as you're going to be able to uh, see here. ROS2. So there are other uh, other things also that have been introduced here. So in case you are interested, you can have a look, uh, an extended look here in the official documentation, okay? Here we are doing just some uh, examples to demonstrate some of these features that I have considered that they are interesting, okay? And uh, to finish, the final one is just a comment, let's say, no, not even a demonstration, but basically just to let you know that the default ROS middleware implementation has been changed to Eclipse Cyclone DDS, okay? So again, um, in the live class, in the... Uh, in this live class that I was commenting uh, before, that I uh, have created previously, this live class, Understanding DDS in ROS2, here... Let me mute this. There we go. In this live class, I explain how to, well, more in depth what this DDS means, uh, what uh, ROS middleware means, etc. And also how to change the DDS implementation, etc. So, um, when I created this live class, the DDS implementation by default was another one. I think it was fast DDS or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but just to let you know that the implementation, the default implementation in the galactic distribution has been changed to the Eclipse Cyclone DDS implementation, okay? You, we can very easily check this, running this command, rush to doctor report, generating a report. Let me stop all, all this here. Great. So we can generate a report here in order to get data about the system. And one of the things that we are going to be, to be able to see is that the middleware used is the Cyclone DDS implementation, okay, in uh, Galactic. 
Yeah, for previous distribution, this implementation was a different. If I'm not wrong, it was fast DDS, I think. Not sure about it in any case. Okay, just a, a, a comment so that uh, you know about it. Remember that here all I have left a link also in order the, in case that you want to get more data about uh, all this middleware architecture, how it works, the DDS implementations, data distribution, uh, etc. Uh, et okay, so, so yeah. Then I have added here, we have already reached the the, the final, uh, the end of the class time. Uh, in any case, I want to just introduce an extra feature, which uh, I have uh, added it as extra here, and, and, and it is in red color also, because uh, it has not been introduced in, in Galactic, but in any case, I think it's something super interesting, so I wanted to, to also comment it here in this live class because it has been uh, added recently, yeah, not, not with this galactic uh, distribution, but recently. So I wanted to comment it also here, which is the XML support for ROS2 launch files. Yeah, so one of the main things that were uh, changed uh, from ROS1 to ROS2 were uh, the launch files structure. In ROS1, if you have worked with uh, ROS1, and you have experience, you know that launch files were written in uh, XML code, yeah? Then when we changed it to ROS2, the launch files were completely completely reworked and they were gener generated as Python scripts, yeah, which is something uh, very different yeah, in comparison with ROS1. It, it was uh, one of the biggest changes, okay? Then uh, now, lately, ROS2 has added this XML support for launch files. So for instance, uh, we can run this command, I'm going to run it, but I'm only going to, to show it very quickly here. We can come to the ROS2 workspace, src folder, open uh, the demos folder, and for instance, let's open the demos node cpp, and let's go to the launch folder and uh, topics, for instance, okay? Then uh, we have the typical ROS2 launch file, which is a Python script. We can open it here and we are going to see the, the let me close all this. We are going to see the typical structure for a ROS2 launch file with the function generate launch description, etc. okay? This is the typical uh, ROS2 launch file structure that we were uh, using until now, let's say. But uh, lately, this XML super has been introduced, which is super inter interesting. Why? Because we can now generate the same launch file that we have here in XML format, which we have an example right here. Talker listener .xml. And if we open it, we can see that this launch file is super, super similar to a ROS1 launch file, yeah? So we have the launch tag, the node tag, where we specify the package, the executable and the output arguments, yeah? So as you can see, this launch file looks uh, pretty much the same as a ROS1 launch file. So this is a super interesting feature, especially in terms of porting ROS1 code to ROS2, okay? It allows to, to convert ROS1 launch file to ROS2 launch files in a much more easy way. Yeah, and of course these launch files are working. Yeah, so we can run this launch file. Let's, uh, in fact, let's run it real quick here. So we can do a ROS2 launch of the uh, demo node CPP. And what was the name? Talker listener launch XML. Talker listener dot launch dot X. XML, okay? So I'm going to run this XML launch file and as you're going to see here, it works perfectly, okay? So uh, yeah, as I have just said, this is a super interesting feature that has been added uh, recently. It has not been added specifically in the ROS2 Galactic demo, that's why I put it here in red as an, as an extra feature, but I wanted to include it also in this live class so that you also know about this new feature, okay? 
so that you can start using it. And um, and yeah, basically that's all. So I'm going to finish the live class here. I'm a bit worried because I have not seen any 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 comments here in the chat. So I, I don't know if. There has been something strange with the chat. If you are just quiet there and you don't like to, to say anything here in the chat, if everything is super clear and you don't have any questions, I don't know. Okay, in any case, let's let's finish it right here. So thanks to to everybody who has been here with me in this live class. I hope you you you've learned something uh, new and um, let me tell you that let me change the screen by the way let me tell you that uh, we are this is the last live class we are not going to have a live class for the next two weeks okay so next week there's not going to be live class and next week uh, neither okay so for the following uh, two weeks we are not going to have live classes because of the ROS developers day yeah, so we need to to prepare for the prepare properly for this conference, which uh, we want uh, to make it a, a, a really a amazing a, and a really amazing and awesome experience for all the attendants. So we want to focus on that, and then we are not going to be doing live classes for the next two weeks. Okay, so yeah, uh, make sure to register to the Ross Dev Day, and uh, in that case, we are going to see to see you there, okay? So, yeah, thank you very much, and uh, until I see you again, as always, take care and keep pushing your ROS learning. Bye-bye. What are you doing, Alberto? I'm training this intern with ROS. Oof. Did you have this same experience? Spending too much time equipping your team with ROS skills? Check out our ROS Online training solution for enterprises. A fast and easy way to empower your team with ROS. From ROS basics to manipulation, perception, AI, ROS2, everything your team needs to learn is here. Practice with real and simulated robots. Train your team by doing from day one. Also, our ROS experts will provide you one hour of consulting services to boost your robotics projects. Want to become a happy Alberto? Request a demo today.